Okay, you're right. Okay, Jolly, since the reward for Mexican Bob is $500 alive and only $250 dead, I'm going to, uh, rather than target him in the chest, I'm going to go for his hand right here and try to shoot the gun out of his hand. Let's see, my character at 30 feet, I got a net plus 2. I got a 16, plus 2 is 18. Oh, it looks like I missed his hand. Draw a card, Ace of Hearts. Uh, Ace of Hearts, oh, I hit him in the head. Let's see, with my Colt, Bisley in the head, that's 10 points. Looking up the gunshot wound, he, he's dead. <laughs> looks like looks like it's only 250 boys <laughs> okay so that's uh, that's what happens when you shoot a gun in aces and eights uh, well you don't necessarily hit people in the head every time but that's that's how shots are determined so now what what Jolly and I are going to do is walk you through um, what just happened there it really only takes a few seconds uh, but we'll walk you through in detail so it's easier for you to do in your home game but I just wanted to demonstrate how quickly you can actually look up results in the game because it can sound complex. So the first thing you do when you're when you're going to shoot at someone in aces and eights is you take out the shot clock, which is this overlay here, and uh, you put it over a silhouette that reflects the uh, example of what your target looks like. So here he's pointing his gun. Here's a side shot, for example. Uh, over here is a guy that's uh, not yet drawn yet in case you get the drop on him But we'll stick with the one we've been using uh, this one comes in the aces and eights book So you could target a hand Gun hand you could go for the headshot right away Center of mass groin shot anywhere you want to try to shoot a guy shoot his hat off his head any of those things and you just add up your modifiers roll to hit and to get the bullseye, you need to roll a 25 on a 20-sided die, which means you're going to need some good modifiers. For example, point-blank range is a plus 8 modifier. Or you could be laying prone, uh, resting your weapon on a solid object, firing deliberately, and so on and so forth. So, in our example, I tried to shoot the guy in the hand to knock his gun out of his hand, and I rolled an 18, which is a pretty good roll uh, out of d20, but it means I, I missed my target by a couple of feet. And so the result could have been anywhere on this ring. We know I'm off by two feet, but we don't know how far. So what I did was I drew a standard poker card. And you can see hearts are to the right, spades are up, clubs are down, diamonds are to the left. I drew a standard poker card, and I looked up ace of hearts along here, and that's how I got the headshot. I could have easily drawn something different, like I could have drawn a jack of clubs. And on the 18 with the jack of clubs, it would have missed him entirely. Okay, I could have drawn a four of clubs and I could have hit him in the side, for example, or I could have drawn an eight of hearts and I could have got him in the chest, or any number of diamonds would have missed. But but I didn't, I drew an ace of hearts and that's why we did the headshot. At that point, we look up in the book under gunshot rune for head and we roll our damage and each gun does various amounts of damage. Um, so, you know, uh, a revolver is going to do a d6 ish type damage, d6 plus one. D5 plus 1, D4 plus 1, somewhere in that range, and uh, a rifle is going to do a little bit more damage. Um, and, you know, so like a, a sharps, for example, is going to do a lot more damage, and your pocket pistol is going to do a very small amount of damage. In any case, you, you based on how much damage the, wep the bullet does and where it hits is going to tell you what effect that it's going to have, whether the bullet's going to be lodged, whether um, if you shot a guy in the arm, for example, whether... Uh, the arm is going to be broken or whether it's just a flesh wound, that's all going to be a factor of how much damage you actually roll. So small damage numbers are going to end up being flesh wounds and grazes. Larger damage, larger numbers are going to end up having lodged bullets, uh, internal bleeding, um, knocking uh, your opponent unconscious or to the ground, things like that. And um, in campaign play that can be particularly nasty, especially if you're, you need a sawbones to try to uh, remove a lodged bullet and that could be touch or go or your character could ultimately succumb to infection for or any number of bad things can happen during surgery and after surgery during healing. Okay, let me show you another thing about the shot clock that makes it uh, interesting. I, I know some viewers are probably thinking, well, 
that's all well and good, but I have to roll a die, and then I have to draw a card, and then roll damage die, and what do I get for that? I get just very, very precise result as far as where the hit is and how much damage it is, but that seems like it's going to slow down my game. But I, I'm here to tell you, I don't really think it's going to slow down the game. It works very quickly. Plus, you don't need any rules for called shots, because every shot's a called shot. And second of all, You don't need any rules for cover because for cover you just cover the silhouette. So now we've got a guy here that's shooting from a window, right? And I'm going to try to hit him. Okay, now if I rolled that 18 and I got, for example, an eight of clubs would be down, would be low. You could see that the window would have given this guy cover. A shot that would have hit him in the abdomen is now hitting the cover. And we know from the rules how much damage the cover can take. I simply roll damage and the cover absorbs the damage and if it doesn't absorb all of it it's going to go through and we even know where the character is hit we just remove the cover and we know that there was an abdomen shot so however many points of damage remain based on the power of my weapon is going to show how badly he's hurt when my shot goes through that when my shot goes through that wall and hits him also available on our website are plenty of other types of cover. For example, we've got barrels. We have barrels stacked up. You want to zoom out to so see the barrel? Or... <laughs> <laughs> we've got barrels. <laughs> so if a guy's standing behind some barrels, those could be stacked on there. We have water troughs, um, saloon doors, all sorts of things. So. You could have a kneeling character behind a water trough, for example, right? So one more time, let's run you th back through that example, and I'll show you how quickly it goes. All right, Jolly, I'm targeting the guy's hand. I got a net plus two because of my range and my character's score. Target's not moving. I got an 18 to hit. Look at that. Looks like I missed. Let me draw a card. Drew the Ace of Hearts. So, uh-oh, that looks like I shot him right in the head. Let me roll my damage here for my weapon. It's two dice because I hit him in the head. That's 11 points of damage. And under gunshot wounds for the head at 11 points, I'm afraid that Mexican Bob has no head no more. So that, my friends, is how we determine gunshots. If you look at the, our other tutorial on shotguns, you'll see what happens if this were, in fact, a shotgun, which could be a lot nastier 